You all ready to catch these hands? Good, because today we're talking about grip. Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to get our grip on. All right. So there's oftentimes a debate between which is better between traditional grip versus matched grip. Okay. And you hear a lot, especially like in the marching percussion world, uh, not so much in the uh, drum set playing community. There's a lot of pros and cons for both grips for both applications. Um, so today we're going to go into a little bit of that. I'm going to discuss the types of grips um, and uh, how to really kind of like make the most use out of them. We will also discuss what their most common applications are as well. So <clears throat> we're going to start out with traditional grip. Um, traditional grip is highly noticeable in the marching percussion world, specifically for the snare drum line. Um, and you'll also see um, it used almost exclusively for jazz players. Um, and there's even a lot of rock drummers and stuff that will actually use traditional grip as well. Um, uh, Todd Suckerman from the band Sticks is one that comes to mind, he's a phenomenal drum set player. Um, and uh, I'll actually leave you guys a link to his channel so you can check him out because the guy's a beast and he really does a awesome job of playing rock drum set with traditional grip. So um, yeah, so there's that, go check him out. That being said, it is the foremost preferred grip for marching percussion snare drum. Um, and there's a reason for that. There's actually a lot of history that goes behind why we play traditional grip for marching snare. And it really goes back to old times when, you know, like guys were marching um, out to battle, you know, and they were using these big giant field drums um, and they would actually be carrying them using a sling, you know, um, and that's the way they would do that. So that, that sling caused the drum to sit at a very extreme angle, okay? So um, in creating that angle, it's just not realistic to hold, you know, your hand grip as a match grip and try to like, you know, play on that extreme angle like that. So what would happen would be <clears throat> they would actually use their arm resting kind of across the drum, like it'd be on the side of the drum, holding the drum in place, um, and they would be playing, you know, with this rotation in, 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 the, in the grip this way to be able to play on that drum. The drum was moving quite a bit when they were marching. Um, it was supported by like a little leg brace and stuff down here. And every time they would march, that drum would move and lift, and they would basically have to move their arm with that drum. And it just made more sense to use a rotation um, than it did to use that, like I said, that match grip, trying to get that weird funky angles and stuff. So that's kind of what that is. Now, you actually still see, see this a lot um, down in the south with a lot of show bands that still use, you know, and uh, the sling harnesses. And uh, it's, it's really cool to watch, see these guys out there high-stepping with their drums and stuff like that. It's really, really cool to check that out. Um, I'll post a, a couple of videos for that as well. Um, so yeah, so there, there's, there's a lot of history behind why they actually use that particular grip, you know, for, for those types of drumming, okay? Um, in the more modern, like core style stuff, where we use, you know, harnesses and, uh, and carriers that are, um, it's a lot easier to set, like, the drums completely flat now. You actually still see a lot of cores that still rock their drums with a little bit of a tilt, you know, and it's a it's an aesthetic thing now at, at this point, point. Um, and it looks really cool too. Like when you have like you know these angles and stuff, and uh, and we're playing some like back stickings and stuff like that, and it looks just it looks cool. You know, like I said, it's it's a completely aesthetic at this point. Um, but you know, to each their own, and depending on um, what you're using it for, will depend on whether or not you'll use a preferred. Uh, traditional grip or one of the match grips and stuff that we'll talk about. So some things to consider when we're using the traditional grip, all right? Uh, the right hand is going to be matched grip um, and we'll go into what the right hand is going to be doing when we're going to the match grips and stuff like that. So the biggest focus with the traditional grip is going to be what the left hand is doing, okay? So when we actually want to pick up the stick to play, um, the way I teach all my students is you reach your hand out as if you're shaking somebody's hand, okay? So you reach your hand out, the stick is going to rest in that cradle, that webbing right there between the thumb and the forefinger, all right? That's where the stick's going to, going to sit, okay? You don't want to be pulled too far back because 
you're not going to have a whole lot of control. And then again, like we'll go to do those back sticking things. Obviously, if you're too far back, then it's not going to have like a, a lot of motion, range of motion right there. We don't want to be too far forward because again, that's not like a really good balance point. Um, and and again, you're not going to get the best uh, resonance from the stick. You're not going to get the best rebound from the stick as well. So you want to find a point on the stick where the stick kind of wants to balance really well and have a, a decent amount of, uh, of rebound to it and stuff. Okay, so for me, on this particular set of sticks, it's kind of right about there, okay? So we're gonna act as though we're shaking hands with the stick. We're gonna take our forefinger, okay? And we're gonna wrap the forefinger over the top of the stick, and then the thumb is gonna come down and press right on that first knuckle, okay? That's where we wanna have that pressed right there, first knuckle, okay? From there, middle finger's gonna be nice and straight. Swing the ring finger underneath. The ring finger is going to support the bottom of the stick. It's going to support the stick underneath. And we want the stick to be resting right on the cuticle of that first joint right there. Okay, so shaking hands, forefinger over the top, thumb to the first knuckle, middle finger straight, ring finger supporting right there on that cuticle, and then the pinky is just there to support that. Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking for right there as far as a traditional grip goes, okay? <clears throat> as far as the stroke is concerned when we're using traditional grip, okay? We don't wanna be using this up and down movement like that, okay? That's, that's not good, we're not using the right muscles when we do that, that's gonna uh, create a lot of fatigue, um, unnecessary fatigue, so we don't wanna do that, okay? So what we wanna do, uh, there's two different types of techniques that we're thinking about, okay? So when we think about various types of ways to hit the drum, the way I explain this to all of my students is the difference between wrist break technique and what we call wrist rotation technique, okay? So with this, we're looking for a rotation, okay? We want the hand and the arm to be one and we want that motion right there. We want a nice rotation of the wrist, okay? That's smooth, that's natural, that doesn't use a lot of like, you know, un unnecessarily upward movement from the shoulder and from the elbow, okay? Now there are times to initiate from the shoulder and from the el elbow, and we'll go into that in some of our, um, our more intermediate advanced uh, technique uh, lessons later on. But for right now, the biggest focus is kind of keeping the elbow nice and stationary and just rotating from the wrist, okay? And that looks something like this. Right? Looking for that rotation, not, not the up and down movement. Rotation, okay? So that's what we're looking for there. Think about it as turning a doorknob is the wrist rotation technique, okay? When we reach out to turn the doorknob versus the wrist break, which would be like knocking on the door, okay? Wrist break, you're gonna see that. The wrist is gonna be moving while the arm stays stationary, okay? Versus a rotation, okay? So wrist, wrist break, wrist rotation, okay? So that's basically what we're gonna look at for um, tradition. <clears throat> the right hand is actually going to be using the matched grip, okay? So left hand be traditional, right hand would be matched. Now when we talk about matched, there's commonly three different types of matched grips that are most talked about and most used, okay? And three different ones are going to be French, German, and American. Each one has its dominant uh, uses. Um, and applications, but um, uh, for the most part, it really kind of just depends on what it is you're doing, okay? So when I think about technique, and specifically when I think about grip, I think about fluidity of motion, okay, and fluidity of technique. And depending on what I'm doing will depend on what grip I'm using and how I'm using that grip. And one thing to consider is that when we play drum set, we're using a lot of different things that we're hitting all at one time, right? So. We've got our hi-hat, our snare drum, we got our toms, we got crashes, we've got our ride cymbals, we've got effect cymbals, a lot of times we'll have cowbells and you know, granite blocks and we have all of our toms and everything. So, so we have a lot of different playing surfaces that we're trying to strike all at one time that are at different heights, different angles, that, um, they've got different uh, feels to them depending on if we're hitting a cymbal that's metal versus whether we're playing on a head, you know, so there's, there's a lot of different things at play. Um, so utilizing one specific thing is not really going to make a whole lot of sense, okay? So, I'm going to go into the, uh, the difference in the, the grips themselves, and then I'll kind of explain as to how those could actually be utilized um, in the, uh, the drum set application. <clears throat> so, first grip we're going to talk about is going to be 
the French grip, okay? And French grip, when, instead of playing kind of like we're used to this way, we're actually gonna pull our hands in somewhat, okay? And we're gonna take our thumbs, and our thumbs are gonna be right on top of the sticks, okay? And what's happening there is our palms are now kind of facing inward towards one another. And we're playing this way. This is real common for like timpani and a lot of like uh, concert percussion stuff. Okay, so best way that's gonna be thumbs to the ceilings, palms inward facing one another. Okay. The next grip is gonna be what we refer to as a German grip, okay? And German grip is gonna be palms flat to the floor, okay? Parallel to the playing surface, okay? So with this, it's a real flat kind of look. You know, our hands are flat. Um, and you'll see when we do that, that has a tendency to kind of pinch off this area right here. We can open it up a little bit and everything if we want to, um, but it's, it doesn't have quite the same feel to it. So when we're playing with a, a German grip, you know, that's, that's what we're looking at right there. We're looking at, you know, palms to the floor, thumbs kind of facing one another, and we're playing. So that's kind of what we're looking at right there for a, a, a German grip. Now, for American grip, it's kind of something in between, right? It's not quite French, it's not quite German, it's kind of right in the middle of that. And there's a reason for that, and it comes down to, um, it's more of a loose and a, a, a legato kind of approach to playing and, and sticking and stuff. So what we're gonna do is I, I usually teach my students to start with that German position right there, palms down, and then we just rotate our hands slightly, okay? And basically it's about a 45 degree angle, so from flat, to, to German, to French, kind of something in between is where we find American. And in doing so, it tends to open this section of the, of the grip up a little bit. And what that does is it, is it releases a lot of the tension in the hand. So we're not putting so much stress on the ligaments and the tendons and the muscles in the hand and also in the wrist and stuff. So by doing it that way, it's a little more legato, it's a little more loose. It's meant to be a real relaxed grip that we can use for a lot of different applications, okay? So those are the three grips, okay? We've got your French, German, and then somewhere in between is American, okay? <clears throat> now, I mentioned that we could use multiple grips and fluidity of technique when we're playing the drum set, right? A lot of times when we're sitting behind our drum set, you know, we're playing, like I said, hi-hat, toms, got cymbals, and all that kind of stuff. So, so we don't necessarily use one specific grip all the time, depending on what we're doing. And, and what I mean is, a lot of times um, you'll, you'll be playing, you know, where you know, you're just kind of playing a nice rock beat and everything on a hi-hat, and when you're doing that, a lot of times your hand will naturally just flip over and you're playing more French, okay? Playing French with the right hand, and then on the snare drum, you might be playing either American or German, depending on what you're doing. If you play open, you know, you've got people that are playing, you know, with their left hand over here like this, you know, you've got that hand, once again, back to French, okay, and then the right hand might be playing either American or German, okay? So there's that. Then the other thing to consider is when we're playing around the drum set and we're playing fills, we almost naturally want to switch to a French grip because we're playing up, you know, like we're playing at a different height, so we're hitting things differently depending on how our drum sets are even positioned, okay? Um, if, if we really think about like we're gonna stick to like a German grip all the time and our palms are gonna be down, then when we're playing around the drum set, it gets a lot more um, congested to play like this. It's a lot more stiff. Um, you don't have as much range of motion. And I really can't really think that anybody would be crashing their cymbals, you know, with their palms down like that, right? You know, it'd be really awkward, it'd be really uncomfortable to play that way. I mean, it just looks silly too, I mean, let's be honest. Okay, so, um, and then another thing to consider too is when we're crashing, odds are in favor we're gonna be flipping over to that French grip to crash. Or when we're playing on our right, you're playing some jazz, some nice swing stuff on the right, ding, ding, da, ding, ding, da, ding, we immediately are typically gonna roll our hand over and play that more legato, right? We're gonna play that nice and loose, we're gonna be playing that more French, ding, ding, da, ding, ding, da, ding, right? So, but if we're playing like a real driving rock groove and we're up on that right again, but we're playing like right on the bell, odds are in favor we're gonna roll our our hand over a little bit and either play German or American because we're gonna be wanting to get that shoulder of the drumstick right to that bell on that cymbal, okay? So think about that, fluidity of motion to create quality of sound. Don't think about being stuck into one specific technique in order to play a certain way, okay? And I know there's a lot of instructors out there, there's a lot of teachers that are like, oh no, we're gonna play this way only and that's the way we play. 
yeah, that might work when you're trying to blend with, you know, nine guys on a snare line, you know, but when you get into playing concert percussion, when you get into playing, you know, front ensemble, different instruments, when we're playing drum set, when we're playing various things, that's not always the case. And if you don't have to match what eight other guys are doing, you know, you have a little bit more freedom to be able to do whatever it is that you want to make sure that you're getting the quality of sound that you're looking for based on whatever it is that you're playing, okay? So those are some things to consider, all right? When we're playing, get your traditional grip, get your French grip, German, American. All right, so one other thing to consider, right? We're thinking about how we're holding the sticks, but we also have to take into consideration what we call our fulcrum, okay? Our fulcrum is basically where our fingers make contact with the stick, okay? And what that does is that creates a hinge, a pivot point, okay? So that's what we're looking for with the fulcrum, okay? Where we're making contact with the stick to initiate the stroke, okay? So fulcrum controls the stroke and the pivot of the stick, okay? So we're thinking about the fulcrum, we don't want to choke the stick off, all right? We don't want to grip too tightly, okay? And there's a reason for that. So when we choke the stick too tightly, we're not allowing the stick to resonate, okay? Which means when we go to hit certain things, say a cymbal, um, that stick's choked off, it can't resonate, it can't vibrate, that puts a lot of force into the stick, which that's where you see guys that are breaking cymbals or breaking sticks really often. Um, I don't break sticks very often, um, whether I'm playing on my acoustic kit or on my electric kit, either one. Yeah, the, you know, the Rollins, they've got, you know, rim savers on them and stuff. I actually chew through my rim savers way more often than I actually break sticks, okay? And part of that's technique. So something to consider is that if the stick can't resonate, it can't vibrate, okay? There's no vibration there. That makes the stick stiff and really brittle. So if you're breaking a lot of sticks, that might be something to do with technique, okay? It might be something to do with, you know, placements and angles of your cymbals and drums. Um, there's a lot of things that play, but in my experience, teaching for as long as I have, uh, I can generally say that if you're breaking a lot of sticks, it's because you're gripping your sticks too tightly and you're not allowing them to resonate, which is making them very rigid and very brittle, okay? A lot of like, oh, well, what type of sticks do you use? Well, I've got sticks that are over 20 years old um, that I still play with on almost a daily basis. So um, it's, it's really rare that I actually break a drumstick, okay? So that's something to consider. If you're getting blisters or if you're getting a lot of hand fatigue, um, if your muscles feel really tight after playing for 30 minutes to an hour, um, odds are in favor you are gripping too tight, okay? We don't wanna do that because that puts us at risk for carpal tunnel syndrome, tendonitis, arthritis, all that kind of stuff. So it's something that we really want to make sure that we stay loose when we're playing because um, that's going to make our drums sound better. It's going to have an overall effect on the quality of your sound, okay? And it's going to have a huge impact on the longevity of your ability to drum, okay? So keep those things in mind. Make sure we're conscious of the fact of how tightly we're gripping things and how much we're tensing up because we don't want tense we don't want tension in our shoulders and our neck. We don't want tension in our back. We don't want tension in our elbows or wrists or anything like that. Even our feet when we're playing our kick drums. Okay, we want to stay loose. We want to stay legato. We want to stay nice and fluid. Remember what I said, fluidity of motion, fluidity of technique, and quality of sound. All right, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. Make sure you like this video. Share it if you think it's you know, viable information somebody could use. Um, and make sure that you ring the bell so that you know when the next lesson comes out, all right? Thanks, I appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you next time.